What's up guys, in this video what I wanna do is give you five steps that you need to follow to be able to graph a function like this. I call it my five step method. So what we wanna do is we want to be able to graph um, this rational expression on an x, y axis, all right? So the first thing that we always wanna be able to look at when we are trying to graph a rational function, step number one is to go ahead and simplify. And I'm sure you guys are pretty used to this. Your teacher probably tells you over and over and over again, like make sure you simplify, 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 right? As mathematicians, I'm not a mathematician by the way, but as humans and people that are involved with math, like math can get pretty complicated. So one of the things to always do is to look at a problem and try to say, how can I look at this in a more simpler format? What's also gonna help us when we're simplifying this is it's gonna help us identify the certain characteristics um, that we're looking for in a rational expression. Whereas if we didn't have it in simplified form, one, we'd get it wrong, which I'll show you in um, coming up later in this video, and then two, it's just gonna make the process a little bit more difficult. So when I talk about simplify, what am I talking about? Well, I'm basically talking about factoring, right? And the reason why is because when we can set something as factoring, what we're doing is we're rewriting an expression as a product. And the reason why that's important is because the division property, which is gonna help us simplify this expression, can only be applied when you have expressions or terms separated by multiplication. So in this type of equation, I'm basically asking myself, what two numbers multiply to give me negative four, add to give me negative three. I picked up some problems that are rather simple, so hopefully you recognize that's negative four and positive one. And then here in my denominator, we can see here that I have a, um, what two numbers multiply to give you four, add to give you a five. Um, so this one is going to become an x plus one times a x um, plus four try to be confusing on purpose, right? And that's a lot of times what your teacher is going to try to do. They're going to try to play those mental games with you as far as what should be, you know, factored out so you could factor it wrong. Because I was like thinking, I didn't remember doing this problem or setting it up. So I was thinking that I wanted the fours to divide out, but no, it's actually these positive ones are going to divide out. So to show you how this actually kind of looks, let's go and actually rewrite this problem down here so you can see it in factored form. Okay. So now what I want you to recognize is I have factored out, now the terms are separated by multiplication, right? This is so important because now these terms are separated by multiplication, I can now divide out these terms in the top and bottom. Now that's going to leave me with a final answer or a simplified answer here of a x minus four, x plus four. So that's gonna be my simplified form, okay? And basically what I did here is I just, you know, kind of saved some work here, divide those out, I just wanted to clean things up so you could see it down there below. All right, so now we have simplified the expression. Step number two is now to be able to identify the asymptotes. And when I'm talking about identifying asymptotes, I'm talking about vertical, I'm talking about horizontal and oblique. Okay, so we wanna find the asymptotes and the holes. And then a lot of times students are like, well, what's the difference between an asymptote and a hole? So an asymptote is what we call a non-removal discontinuity. A whole is what we call a removal discontinuity. But both of them have the same word in common, discontinuity. And what that means is they are not actually a part of the graph or they are not defined for the function. So then we gotta think to ourselves, well, what numbers are not gonna be defined for a function? In this example, the only thing that's not gonna be defined for this function is the value that's gonna make my denominator equal to zero. So you look at our simplified form and you say, well, the only number that I know that's gonna make my answer going to be zero is going to be a negative four, right? So therefore I can just write in here like, you know, x equals a negative four. Now. What is that though? Is that a vertical asymptote or is that a hole? All right, so basically when you want to be able to identify the asymptotes, all I simply want you to do is to go ahead and take your denominator and set it equal to zero. Now again, you can use the simplified form, okay? Or you can actually use the simplified factor form. I do think it's important to be able to set that up equal to the simplified factor form. So let's go and do that real quick. Okay, so when you set your denominator equal to zero, again, it was already in factored form, that's why I said to simplify it first, then you can see here I have these two values, x equals negative four. Now, x equals negative four never got removed, did it, right? It's still in the final answer. I'm actually gonna erase this over here. So what can we say about that? We can now say that is going to be what we call our vertical asymptote. So since that is my vertical asymptote, this is going to be my hole. The reason why it's a hole, because remember I said that word removable discontinuity? See what happened is, how did the x minus one get removed? Well, the factor expression x plus one got divided out. So therefore you can see how it got removed. All right, so we've identified our hole and our vertical asymptote. Now, um, now what we're gonna do is go ahead and plot these points. So one, two, three, four. And then what about a hole? How do we know where this hole is at negative one? So the one thing that we can kind of do here is you can take your value, negative one, and plug it into your simplified expression. All right, so if you wanna find where exactly is the hole at negative one, what we're gonna do is actually plug it in. So I'm gonna take a negative one minus four, 
all over negative 1 plus 4. All right, so therefore this is going to give me a negative 5 um, thirds. Okay, so at negative 1, we are now going to be at a negative 5 thirds, right? And again, we don't need to be perfect. I just want to give you guys an idea of where exactly that's going to be at. Okay, so now we got an asymptote, and there you go. So it's a hole in the graph. So now we know the graph needs to go through this value. Um, the next thing we need to look at is the horizontal asymptote, or if we're looking at an oblique asymptote. So remember the rules of horizontal asymptotes. Whenever the degree in the numerator is equal to the degree in the denominator, the horizontal asymptote is just going to be a ratio of leading coefficient over leading coefficient. So in this example, my horizontal asymptote is equal to y of y equals 1 over 1, which again is just going to equal a 1. So now what I'm going to do is at 1, I'm going to do a nice little horizontal asymptote here. Okay, so we're kind of getting somewhere, right? You guys can see we now have our horizontal, we have vertical asymptote, and we have our hole. But a lot of students still have no idea what is x minus 4 divided by x plus 4? What does that graph look like? So the next thing we're going to want to do is identify the intercepts. Okay, so the x and y intercepts is pretty easy. If you remember, the x intercept is when y is equal to 0. The y intercept is when x is equal to 0. But when we're dealing with rational expression, guys, we can make our life a lot easier. So if I want to find the x-intercept, if I replace y is equal to 0, I'm going to solve for x, I'm going to have to multiply my denominator. So all you simply need to do, here's a little trick to make things life easier. And again, this is why we can use the simplified form. We don't need to use, you know, the old original factor form. But, and again, this is a reason why it's so important to use that actually to have simplified this, that first step. Because remember, can your whole be an intercept? No, right? So we don't have to worry about this. The only thing we need to do is set our numerator equal to zero, and that's going to give us now our x-intercept. So one, two, three, four. I now have my x-intercept. Um, the next thing I'm going to want to do is now go ahead and find my y-intercept. Now my y-intercept is when x is equal to zero, right? So if you plug in zero, my y-intercept is going to be negative one. So what I'll do is I'll just do a yeah, negative four, negative one, okay? So. All right, now, if you know anything about the behavior of graphs, if you know, understand about your asymptotes, you know the graph is, always has to be approaching these asymptotes. So sometimes students can understand, like, hey, this graph is going to look like this, or at least that bottom part, right? Because it has to go from here to here, it has to go through this hole, it's not defined for the hole, but then it has to approach this asymptote, and then it has to approach that asymptote. But um, I don't want you to leave off from there, because a lot of times when you get to rational expressions, they get pretty difficult, okay? So what you're going to want to do is kind of follow the next step, which is going to be to identify or to plot your points. And then the last one I said was just connect, which, I mean, I guess is a step. I wanted, I thought five sounded better than four, so I was like, we'll do five step. Um, but really connecting is kind of a lazy point. Sorry about that. But now you know. So if you watch to the end of the video, you get my little tactic. <laughs> Sorry. But let's go and figure out, like, where's the rest of this graph? Now, hopefully you recognize it can't be above that, right? Because then it wouldn't be a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test. But is it going to be over here or over there? So what we're going to want to do then is pick a point, right? So what I always tell my students when I want to plot points, I always like to tell them plot points to the left as well as to the right of all your vertical asymptotes. Sometimes you got to plot two to get a better understanding. And so what I'm going to do is let's say one, two, three, four, let's do five, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do f of five. And let's go and see, this is actually f of negative one, right? There you go. And again, the cool thing, guys, is I can just use the simplified form, right? So it's a five minus 4 all over a 5 plus 4. I'm not trying to do that. I was like, something doesn't sound right. So let's go and do a negative 5, right? This is negative 5 over there. There you go. Okay, negative 5 minus 4 is going to be negative 9. A negative 5 plus 4 is going to be um, a negative 1. Okay, so at negative 5, we're at 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so again, we know, guys, the graph has to approach my vertical asymptote and my horizontal asymptote. The only way that I'm going to be able to do that, guys, is to draw a nice little hyperbola. And again, like with your study of rational expressions, hopefully you recognize this is actually a reciprocal function. So it's going to have that reciprocal function um, pattern. And again, if you wanted to, to like do negative six, right? Do negative seven. You're going to see it's going to be a much smaller value. And again, I'll maybe I'll just do it in my head. Negative six minus four is a negative 10. Negative six plus four is going to be a negative two. And that's going to be five. So negative six, we're at one, two, three, four, five right? Or something like that. So, I mean, but you see the pattern is going down this way. It has to be approaching that horizontal asymptote. So um, there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is my five step problem for graphing a rational function. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If you want more examples of graphing rational functions, check down the examples I have for you down below, or you're going to love the video I have for you next. Cheers.